Amen. Good morning. Today on this second Sunday of January, we are continue, continuing our worship series, Finding Our Way. Part two today is called Fresh Starts and Baptism. Fresh Starts and Baptism. The gospel reading today comes from Mark chapter 1, verses 4 through 11. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to swoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of God's holy word. Amen. I grew up like many of you with this saying that a cat had nine lives. Nine lives. Stuck with one life, I started thinking this week, where did such a saying come from? There's an old English proverb, maybe you've heard it. A cat has nine lives. For three he plays, for three he strays, and for the last three he stays. William Shakespeare made reference to the cat's nine lives in Romeo and Juliet. Have you ever noticed that cats are fast, they're springy, they're flexible, they have this tiny collarbone which allows them to squeeze through tiny spots. We've probably all seen movies where it did appear that a cat may have nine lives. They have been known to get out of tight situations over and over again. That said, for followers of Christ, it could be said that we have two lives. We have the date we were born, and then we have another date, and that is our baptism. It is the closest thing to a second life that perhaps we get. Mother Teresa regards this second life as her birthday. She was born August 26, 1910, and she was baptized the next day in good faith, August the 27th. When people ask her what her birth date is, she refers to the day in which she was baptized. For her, that's the day she really was born. It was her beginning. There are two big sacraments in the church. One we know is communion. We do communion every first Sunday here at United. But at other churches, they do communion every Sunday. Wow. Well, that second sacrament is baptism. According to Frederick Buchner, a sacrament is when something holy happens. It is a transparent time, time you can see through to something deep inside time. In the very early church, baptism was connected to Easter. Jesus dies and is resurrected, and we too die and are res resurrected as a new creation and a new life in Jesus. In my own Baptist tradition, the week before Easter, we had a revival. And each week that week, there would be a pastor that would preach, and at the end, they would open the doors of the church and invite people to give their life to Christ. And then on Easter morning, everyone who had walked down was baptized. All the candidates were dressed in white. They went down in the water. They were fully immersed, also known as they got dunked. And they came up, hopefully, as a new creation with a fresh start. 
In the biblical text today, we experience Jesus' baptism at the beginning of his own ministry. The word baptism literally means to plunge, to immerse, to wash. It was used as a general noun in addition to connect us with the Jewish and pagan tradition of cleansing and purification. At the very beginning of his own fresh start in ministry, Jesus presents himself vulnerable and exposed, ready to be baptized by his cousin, we learned, John. Perhaps he was experiencing a cleansing ritual to get himself ready for spiritual welfare, to confront all the many powers that would come his way, to protect him while going through a very hard time in life. Or perhaps this was written, you know, many, many years after his death, once baptism had become more of a Christian thing to connect him with us. The meaning of baptism for Jesus and for John and for others at that time was perhaps different than what it is for us today. And today there are different understandings of baptism. But perhaps the one thing that is true across all is that there is power in baptism. There is power in the water. As a child, I remember looking on at other people's baptisms and leaning into Buchner's words. The transparency of something holy was happening. I didn't know what was going to happen. One thing that has stayed the same is that there is power in it. There is power in the water. Water can be healing and restorative. Certain water can renew your skin, and in the process of being in it, it can renew your spirit. Water can bring great joy when we play in it. Water cleanses us when we bathe in it and when we drink it. We actually need water to survive. But water can also be destructive. Waves can knock us off our feet and carry us undertow to our death. They can also be used to put fires out. Hurricanes can destroy entire cities. Remember to tsunami. Water, like everything else, requires moderation. And the reality is that we can't live without it. For Jesus, he comes to the water at the beginning of his ministry. Jesus perhaps already had a glimpse that the road ahead wasn't going to be easy. Perhaps he already knew that he did not have long to live before the Roman government and the collaborators from within his community would find him, charge him on some trumped up charges and get him killed. Embedded in Jesus' baptism is the preparation not only for a fresh start, but for what lies ahead. When Jesus goes down in the water, something happened that it doesn't seem has ever happened before. God's spirit descends upon Jesus and a voice from heaven God's voice calls Jesus as son, a child, a beloved, and one who God is pleased with. God becomes a model of a really good parent who is proud and pleased and speaks words that maybe some of us long to hear, that we are beloved. Perhaps it is the speaking or the water or the believing and what the water can do that prepares not only Jesus for a fresh start, but us. Here is a God that speaks such gentle and simultaneously strong language about our own preciousness. If we really believe this deep down in our soul, then maybe we too have access to a second life. I was thinking about it. How many of you remember your second birth? (laughs) It's still important, even if you can't remember it. So, I want to tell the story about a guy named Paul. Some of you may remember him. Paul was no stranger to loss and tragedy, as his father was killed in the line of duty when he was just three years old. Paul built his own personality on a radio. He was very popular on the radio back when radio was the only instrument of communication and entertainment. Paul Harvey was not religious at all, but for much of his life, he felt a void. He felt like something is missing in my life. And so on vacation, while him and his wife were in Arizona, on a Sunday morning, they found themselves driving to a rural church in Arizona with just about a dozen of people gathered. And the preacher went to the pulpit and began to talk about baptism. And Paul began to yawn, thinking, oh my God, this is about to be a boring sermon. 
might be somehow others are feeling, I don't know. The simple eloquence of the preacher, however, spoke to Paul's heart. And he realized as a believer that he had never actually been baptized. Well, then the preacher finished and the musician played and an invitation was extended right there in that church for folks to get baptized. Well, Paul was shocked when he shot up and walked down to the altar. Here he was a stranger on vacation in a place he'd never been. He surprised himself when he stood up and walked down. But then he describes what happened. The preacher had said there was nothing magic in the water, and yet for Paul, as he descended and came up, he felt like something had changed. Paul found something in that water and came up wailing like a baby. Even though he was well into his career and his life, Paul got a fresh start on that day. And his life took on new meaning. For him, it was a fresh start. Baptism is not just about us and God, but there's a whole community that is out there. Ina Grace reminds me. Paul's wife was there when he took the plunge. And for Paul Harvey, it meant something that his wife was in that congregation. It meant something to have her there. I remember my own baptism at seven years old. There was my aunt, and I hadn't seen her in church before. I was so excited, I started waving until I caught my mother's eyes. You know those eyes that say, cut it out now. And then we got back to the business of baptism. But baptism is not just something you do all by yourself. You do it as connection with God, and you do it in a faith community. You do it among folks who are part of a faith community. You take that faith plunge into troubled waters. Well, today we have a surprise for you. I was talking a couple months ago to Alvin, one of our newest members. We were doing a recording for Crooked Courage podcast. And right in the middle, I discovered that Alvin had never been baptized. Now, before I go on to Alvin, I want to remind you that we have a podcast. And we've done about 10 episodes. And you should really check them out. Because there's some wonderful, wonderful podcasts. They're on YouTube. You can catch them all. You know, if you missed it, it's not too late. Because it's still out there on YouTube. But today... I have a surprise for you, and probably is still a surprise for Alvin. We'd like to, at this time, invite Alvin up, because we want to baptize him. Not only is Alvin here today, but some of the leadership is here today. We trust that you guys are out there. Please send your comments. And we even, shh, don't tell anybody, we even stuck in just a couple, just a couple. We're still under our 10 number in Jesus' name. We snuck in a few of his family members. We are not taking the literal plunge, which was the desire of Alvin's heart. But we are baptizing Alvin today. May the memories and stories of your baptism surround you in this moment, even as we are baptizing Alvin. A lot of times when we think of baptisms, we think of people who are seven years old. And so this is unique. But baptism is for everyone. This is today, Alvin, I invite you to the miracle of the water, the troubled water. Alvin Nicky Stewart, do you desire to be baptized into the faith and family of Jesus Christ? He said he did. Alvin, do you renounce the powers of evil and desire the freedom of new life in Christ Jesus? I do. Do you profess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? I do. 
Somebody said, let's get this man back in time. By the power invested in me, Alvin and Stewart, I baptize you in the name of God the parent. Yeah. I baptize you in the name of the Son. You are immersed. And I baptize you in the name of the Holy Spirit. Welcome to this new faith community. And I will welcome to this journey. Alvin, you may be seated. <laughs> but I'm not just inviting Alvin to baptism today. I'm inviting you all to renew your vows. So there will be words on a screen, and I will ask you questions as well. Do you renew and affirm the promises made at your baptism? I do. Do you recognize the call of God to be but God's people always? I do. Do you embrace the way of Jesus in faith and ministry? I do. Do you accept the nurture of the Holy Spirit who renews your spirit each day? I do. Do you accept and embrace others who seek a liberating faith in God? I do. Amen. In renewing your baptismal vows, remember your baptism as a mark of acceptance and welcome into the care of Christ Church, where you get a fresh start to your Christian faith and life. Many of us said that we were glad to leave 2020 behind us, but 2021 has proven in the first 10 days to be a bang. And one week I've listened to a doctor report, even though we have the shots for COVID, we never had a plan for dissemination. And so we are way behind on getting the vaccine out. I've watched a colleague with a pretty impressive history of fighting injustice come up on charges of sexual misconduct this week. And Wednesday, along with many of you, I witnessed fellow Americans storm the Capitol. And all of it seemed quite unbelievable. Nikki Giovanni said, when things are bad, don't ask, can they get any worse? Because sometimes <laughs> it will show up that they can. It seems like we are living in times where it seems quite frankly unbelievable. As I looked on my TV on Capitol Hill and saw people breaking glass and storming in that felt like an unbelievable moment. And yet in our series, we're talking about finding our way. This is an invitation this month to return to the basics of our beginning in Christ. One author made a lot of money on a book, everything I needed to learn, everything I needed to know, I learned in kindergarten. And I think much of our teachings we learned in Sunday school and we learned early in life. And on Sundays, and as we remain in community, we return to them, and we are reminded of them. And our baptism, and now yours too, Alvin, so that when someone parks in your driveway, you are a new creation. Amen? Remind us that we have a second birth, and whether you remember the date or not, you were born again. In 2021, just as in all the previous years, our journey is one of love and mercy and justice. Our commitment is to the beloved community where all are seen equally and have equal access to food, health, and education. Our commitment is to those like Jesus who have real need. So I invite you to remember what you learned not only in kindergarten, but I invite you to Remember what you learned when you got baptized in your early beginnings. I invite you, Christian community, to pray and to pause, to pause and pray. I invite you to step into the water. I invite you to wade in the water. Now, like sometimes you put your toe in and it's super cold and you have to take a moment. 
I invite you to pause in the water. I invite you to wait in the water because I believe that God still troubles the water. Amen. Amen. There's a prayer that will be on your screen. It's a baptismal renewal prayer. And so I invite all of you to pray with me. Oh God, we rejoice in your grace given and received. We thank you that you claim us, that you wash us, strengthen us, and guide us, that you empower us to live a life worthy of our calling. In the way of Jesus, make us as water in a dry and thirsty world. Establish us to be places of refreshment. Root us and nurture us in love, that with all your people, that we may rightly and justly serve you. Fill us with your fullness, that our lives may overflow in service and love. Amen.